we do our pre-notes for the movie clip that we're going to study today, um, I want to talk about your assignments. And for those of you that are at home, that way you know what you have to do for homework that goes with this. Okay, we just handed out three things. Okay, so first of all, you should have, it either looks like a chart on one side and it has names with notes on the other side that says tombstone characters. We're going to start with the tombstone characters side today. Okay, you should have a packet that says, I married Wyatt a little reading packet. We're going to use that for homework. And then I figured I might as well give you Tuesday's homework while we're at it. This is one of my 30 article reviews for that class. And I really like this article. Um, this talks about today's cowboys and are they real cowboys based on what we've talked about and stuff like that. And I'm guessing some of you have some very opinionated views on that. Let's just say that. I had a couple of cowboys in Arizona that I taught. They were bull riders at the age of 12. Crazy people, crazy guys. Uh, and they definitely would say that they were cowboys. But Max has already done that assignment. He knows what I'm talking about. It's kind of an interesting view. So what you're going to do is read this for Tuesday. And then I know a lot of you have the instructions written on top because my lovely students did that. Yours is not real clear there. But basically it says... You're going to read it and then write one paragraph saying, are cowboys today real cowboys or not? Giving three pieces of evidence, and it must be at least five sentences. Easy. Paragraph, five sentences, three pieces of evidence. Okay? So that way, if you want to get it all done over the weekend, don't want to wait till Monday night, so be it. All right. So today, we are going to focus on the shootout at the OK Corral. Would you be surprised to find out that it actually didn't happen at the OK Corral? The name itself is not even correct. So we're going to study that a little bit. We are going to compare the movie Tombstone, uh, which obviously we know movies kind of exaggerate things. But I do want you to know that this movie is based on the autobiography of Wyatt Earp, like the actual guy that was there. So this guy interviewed him, his autobiography, if he wrote it, someone wrote it, by interviewing him. So, that's a biography. Okay, so um, this is actually Wyatt Earp's words, and they basically are being put into a movie. Now, you're going to compare that over the weekend to this, this uh, little article that's called I Married Wyatt Earp. This is his wife, and she's going to tell you some things about that shootout that maybe you don't see in the movie, and you'll see what's, si what's similar and what's different. Okay, so we're going to kind of do a little activity on... Uh, correct history, that kind of thing too, okay? Now, if you look at um, this side, we're going to start by telling you about the characters so you understand what's happening in the movie. You were introduced to them yesterday a little bit, right? Because we had the little gun off between uh, Johnny Ringo and Doc Holliday, right? But we have a few more characters in this scene. So let's give you a little bit of background. Besides, it's good to know these people. If you're going to know about the Cowboys, you got to know about Wyatt Earp. Of course you do. So let's talk about Wyatt Earp. All right, first of all, Wyatt Earp was a lawman. He got his fame being a lawman in Dodge City, Kansas, one of our cow towns. And like we said, there was no law there. All that were there were these crazy young boys that were getting into trouble. And they said, go clean it up. <laughs> really? So the first thing he said is, you boys, you can have all the fun you want in town, but you cannot carry your gun in town. Well, that's like taking away a guy's manhood, you know? You don't take my gun if you're a cowboy. So they didn't like it. But he said, I don't care if you have a gun. You just have to, they had like a check-in at the edge of town, and they had to check in their gun when they were in town because they would get drinking, and then they'd kill each other, and then they'd get arrested, you know? So he said, just put it away while you're playing. You can have it on your way out of town, no big deal. And um, he only had to kill one person the whole time he was there. And that bothered him for the rest of his life. You know, he's so famous, but he actually only killed one person. Most of the time, they said he was so tough, all he had to do was look at you. And you would be afraid. And if you've seen the movie Tombstone, you know what that's like. They show it. It's really good. So in the clip that we're going to see, Water, you're going to see him played by Kurt, what, Kurt Russell here. You've probably seen him in other movies, kind of a famous actor. Um, now, in the movie, we are in Tombstone, Arizona, and he has decided to move away from Dodge City, Kansas. He cleaned up the city, and now he's headed toward Tombstone, 
because there is a rush going on in Arizona. What is that rush? Silver. There's a silver rush. So he wants to make money. He also um, picks up an oil well that goes horribly, horribly, and he loses his shirt on that process. He also was kind of a, he wanted to be a businessman. He didn't want to do law anymore. He was tired of that. He didn't like that, that lifestyle. So he comes there to make money. And so he also gets involved in gambling outfits. He'll buy like a saloon or manage a saloon and try to make a certain amount of the profits, stuff like that. Well, the problem with that is that um, his enemy in this scene are the cowboys. And the cowboys want to control of those same saloons, those same women, because they had prostitutes in those places. The gambling, they wanted the money, so he's taking away their income, and they don't like that. And so, yes, Mr. Good Guy was basically the owner of prostitutes in Tombstone, Arizona. A lot of people don't know that, because um, he basically made money off the deal. Um, so he goes there, and he convinces his brothers to come with him to Tombstone, because they're going to make their millions. So the second guy we're going to talk about is his older brother. This is Virgil. He is the older brother of Wyatt, and he's going to go make big bucks just like his brother. He is played by Sam Elliott. Awesome actor, right? Did you see the movie Roadhouse ever? Like, best guy movie in history, I think. Every guy from my era watched that movie and wanted to be like him, you know? Yeah, he always plays tough guys in every movie. Well, Sam Elliott, um, great guy to play this. He is the first to actually commit to doing law in Tombstone because he watches these people, and these people are scared for their lives. He sees women getting raped. He sees them with scars on their faces because the cowboys have gotten out of hand. And he said, we've got to have law. We can't be in this town and turn our backs. So he decides to be a lawman. Wyatt says, are you kidding? I want nothing to do with it at first. The third brother is cute little Morgan. Cute little Morgan, he's the baby brother, except he is not the youngest. His youngest actually stayed back on the farm. Um, the younger brother is back on the farm. He came with, he was newly married, so um, both he and Virgil bring their wives with them. Uh, Wyatt brings a woman. They aren't married. She was a former prostitute. We'll learn about her in a minute. All right, Morgan is played by Bill Paxton. You maybe have seen him in uh, movie Twister when they had those tornadoes. And yeah, he's in a lot of different movies too. So he kind of follows in Virgil's steps, does whatever Virgil does. So he gets involved in being a marshal before Wyatt does too. All right, then we have old Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday is our gunslinger. We talked about him before. Now he's kind of an interesting guy. As you saw in the scene yesterday, He's an educated man, a college educated man. He could speak Latin along with other languages. He was actually a dentist, but he got tuberculosis and he knew he was gonna die. So he decided why not go out in a blaze of glory. So he drops his dentist profession, goes out west, gambles, sleeps with women and shoots people. And that's how he lives his life. So when you saw in the movie, you notice he didn't look very good. That's because he is coughing up blood by this point in his life, and he looks horrible. And one thing I love about this guy, he's played by Val Kilmer in the movie. Val Kilmer was so devoted to this cause and this character that he would speak the way he spoke the whole time they were doing the movie. He um, lost like 30 pounds because he was supposed to look sickly. I mean, he just totally got into this character. It was really great. He won awards for it, too. Well... Doc Holliday, of course, is a gunfighter, and he is known to be the fastest guy in the West. Absolutely. He is also a devoted friend to Wyatt. We don't know exactly where it happened, but we do know it happened in Dodge City. And for some reason, I don't know if Wyatt gave him a pass one night when he killed somebody or what, but they're very good friends, and he is devoted. And really, Doc has no other friends. This is his friend. So he would do anything to help out Wyatt. Um, Oh, like I said, he ate a can of tuna and an apple a day to prepare so he would lose weight. And uh, he actually got tuberculosis, but didn't tell the doctor so he would have more of an accurate portrayal of his character. How scary is that? Wow. I'm not sure. Kissing the wrong person? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm totally joking. I have no idea. 
All right, so let's talk about the women in the story. We're just gonna see a little peek of them in the movie, but obviously in the reading, this is who writes this, right? This is Josie. This is Wyatt's wife. All right. Okay, so this is Josie Earp. That's what she looks like for real. She falls in love with Wyatt in Tombstone. She is an actress who comes through there. Um, and um, at the time, he's with another woman. And they start flirting with each other. Now, this is the gal that plays her. Her name is Dana Delaney. Now, if you look back at the, the readings and what people say about Josie, she was a very, very nice looking lady. And these cowboys really liked her. But the other thing you have to remember is most cow towns were 95 to 98% boys. So to have one girl around, pretty much they look good no matter what they look like because they wanted a woman, right? She was a great looking girl. She was a traveling actress. So she would go from town to town doing these plays. And um, let's just say that a good woman would not have stepped foot in a place like Tombstone. You girls, your daddies would not have allowed you there. So she was kind of considered a slut, a little bit, because she would sleep with men whenever, which women didn't do that, right? I mean, you married before you slept with a guy. So she was kind of, kind of considered a little bit loose. Um, in fact, there's a, a scene like right before the shooting. They're only going to show you a second of it, but you'll see she's actually getting pictures taken of her in very little clothing. Let's just say that. And she's giving it to her boyfriend. Now, she starts out by dating a guy named Johnny Behan, who was one of the law guys in town, the sheriff, I believe he was. Well, Johnny Behan worked with the bad guys. So on the surface, he looked like a good politician, but on the real side, he was a bad guy. And so then, of course, she's flirting with Wyatt. Wyatt's with another lady, but eventually they do get married and they live a long, happy life together, like off into the sunset. All right, let's take a look at the other woman in Wyatt's life. This is Maddie. It's what she looked like in the day. This is Maddie. Maddie was Wyatt's live-in girlfriend. She was a former prostitute, and he saved her from that life. And by the way, his brother, not Virgil, but Morgan, actually married a prostitute as well, saved her from the life. Um, Wyatt did not marry her. It doesn't, I mean, he cares for her, but he doesn't really love her, and this is why. There's a movie back there called Wyatt Earp, and it's his real, like, whole life story. Great movie. Um, when he is, like, 17 years old, he falls in love with this girl, and he is head over heels in love with this girl. They get married. He builds her this cute little cabin. She gets pregnant. So excited. And um, so it's time to have the baby. During labor, the baby dies, and she dies all in the same day. And he goes off the res, man. He goes nuts. He um, burns the house down to the ground, including everything in it, because he didn't want to ever see baby clothes. He had built, you know, the little crib, you know. Um, and then he goes and he becomes a wrestler. He steals horses. He drinks himself almost to death. And luckily, a couple of people grab him and say, you need to get yourself figured out here, man. And so he kind of cleans himself up. But, yeah, Wyatt. But after... He lost that gal, no one could ever compare. So Maddie just really wasn't her. So he never did marry her. Um, so then um, you'll see that she does come with him to Tombstone and she acts kind of like his wife, but eventually he leaves her for Josie and he does fall in love with Josie. Uh, Maddie's kind of a sad story. She is addicted to laudanum because she used to have headaches. Well, laudanum would be like Tylenol back in the day. But laudanum had codeine in it. You know what codeine is? Some of you that have surgery or whatever, right? Heavy stuff. And they would get addicted to it. And so she eventually dies of a drug overdose of laudanum, which would be Tylenol in the day. She eventually has a drug overdose. So kind of sad. All right, let's talk about the other gunslinger here. We have Johnny Ringo. Here's a picture of him right here all cleaned up. Johnny Ringo also was a gunfighter, and he was just mean as a bird, and he was such a mean guy. Um, 
He killed people for fun. He killed priests and didn't even think about it. When they asked him about, geez, Johnny, how could you kill a priest? He goes, I know I'm going to hell anyway. What do I care? I mean, got an interesting view of life. Um, now, some would say he is the leader of the cowboys in the story. Now, not that all cowboys are bad, but in this case, when we say the name cowboys, they are the bad guys of the story. Okay. All right, this is the guy that plays him right here. Um, I've seen him in a couple of movies, but he's not a real big name. But just so you know, that's Johnny Ringo. He's not really in this scene a whole lot. And some people would say this guy is the leader of the cowboys. He's probably more of the brains of the outfit. Ringo's the leader as far as being a gunman of the outfit. Uh, this is Curly Bill. If you read, depending on which version, you'll say this is the leader. Um, the cowboys were known by wearing a red sash, either around their neck or around their waist. And that was a sign that you were part of this game. Okay. So just be aware of that. And this is the guy that plays him in the movie. Johnny Behan? The crooked politician. Yep. The one that, that uh, Josie is dating at first. And then she leaves him for a while. Here's Johnny Behan right here. This is what the original Johnny Behan looked like. This is the guy they used in the movie. Yeah. He is a crooked politician. He is the sheriff of Tombstone, of this county, actually. And like we said, on the surface, he looks like a good guy, but he's working with the cowboys and making money off the deal. So he's a bad guy. And he arranges to get the Earps killed at one point. So let's talk about the cowboys and why they're bad guys. All right. First of all, here's why they're bad guys. Number one, they were cattle rustlers. They would steal people's cattle. Number two, remember, they controlled saloon profits, and then the herbs came in and dove into their money, so they don't like them there. But they also have a history against the herbs before Tombstone because they also robbed stagecoaches. And right before this, Wyatt's job was to protect the stagecoaches uh, for Wells Fargo. That was the company, I believe. So he already hates them because they're his outlaws in that situation. So they hate each other quite a bit. They do a lot of bad things. Now, in the shootout, there are going to be these four guys right here. So I want you to know what they are by what they're wearing so you know who's who. And you can use this while you're watching the video. All right. So first of all, we have the Clanton brothers. We have Billy and Ike Clanton, two brothers, right? On the top here, um, that's Billy for real. Billy is wearing the bright blue shirt in the scene, and he has blonde hair. He kind of stands out. He looks different than everybody else. Okay, so blue shirt, blonde hair. His brother is Ike Clanton, and he is the ugly guy. He's very easy to see. Uh, in the shootout, he's the guy that will, will like get down on his knees and say, please don't shoot me, don't shoot me. And they say, well, get out of here or get to fighting, and he runs away. So he runs away, okay? He's the ugly guy. He's the one that said yesterday, Ball dogs don't go around now here. You know, remember that guy? Yeah, that's him. He's ugly, ugly, ugly. Then we have two McClory brothers in the shootout. We have Frank and Tom. Now, Frank is going to be wearing a brown vest. He is going to be the one that is shot last in the shootout. Down below, we have Tom McClory. And he is wearing a white shirt. And he's the one that's going to be by the horse. So you might want to jot all this down, make sure you know who's who. Because on your questions, you're going to have to talk about who gets shot where, on what part of the body, who gets shot first, second, third, fourth, all that lovely stuff. Because we're going to dig in, man, in detail. Uh, Frank was shot last. Yep. And Tom is the one that will be by the horse. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. If you flip this over to the other side, here is what we're using for our comparison. Here are the questions over here in this column. You are going to write um, the movie. I tell you what, we're going to move this over. So Josie's book, you're going to answer the questions in this column. And where it says article here, we're going to use the movie in that column so we have more space. I cut out one of the three options. So where it says article, just put movie on top there. 
And we're going to answer these questions for the movie over in that column. So let's look at what you're going to look for. Number one, where did it take place? Where did the shootout actually take place? I'm not saying Tombstone because we know what's in that town, but what part of Tombstone? Number two, um, who had which weapon? As in who had a pistol, who had a shotgun? Look at the different kinds of gun, who had peacemakers, all that stuff, okay? Who is to blame and how? Like who started it? Who shot first? So watch really carefully, it's really fast. Who draws first? Who shoots first? Who got shot and where on their body? And I'm gonna focus on the herps on this one. So focus just on their side, okay? Then look for details on how they shot them. Who was the good guy in the story and why? And then other different details that you might see, all right? So I'm gonna show you one time the scene and then we'll watch it more in detail. So the first time I want you to just watch the movie don't worry about writing stuff down, just watch it, okay?